let me connect uh, Daniel Cranting uh, from Abidjan. He's finally found time for us. <laughs> Daniel, okay, all good. Charlie, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm did good, did you? I think you missed this, but someone sent a message that now that you are married, you will not come back from Abidjan with a story for us like you did Papa, when you came Papa, back. From Papa. Papa. <laughs> I, you see, the fact is that married people respect marriage, but it doesn't mean that unmarried people respect But I'm a nice guy. I'm a very fresh boy. So don't move to me, but I'll reject you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, listen, th- thanks for making time. Uh, let's, talk about the, let's talk about the AFCON final. It's all set now um, between Nigeria, of course, and Cote d'Ivoire. You've been there for a few days now. Um, what is it? What is it looking like in terms of where the momentum is and what the feeling is like in both camps and what should we expect on Sunday? I saw you were at that Cote d'Ivoire versus DR Congo game. The atmosphere was next level. I'm imagining that on the final day on Sunday you would have to multiply that by by ten, by ten or by one thousand. I'm telling you, it was it was absolutely electric, but. Even before I even before I talk about the the Ivory Coast game, even before I talk about the Ivory Coast game, um, Bufta made a brilliant point when he said, "Look, um, it's actually in the rules, the rules and regulations for the host nation and then uh, member associations. You can actually request for extra measures to be taken um, for your hotel arrangement in terms of security and things." So, uh, Bufta is right if he concludes that it's very possible that the GFP asked um, CAP officials not to allow the uh, black stars to be that close to the media men. But we condemned it when it was happening. We condemned it when uh, he first reported it when he was there. But unfortunately, right now, I think it would be very hypocritical for us as journalists to say it's, a, it's, a, it's wrong because we all saw what happened after the team got knocked out. Um, our colleagues handling insults, some threatening to beat up the coach. So, as of now, um, if fans did it, we'll condemn it. And if journalists do it, you have to condemn it. Yes. Um, some may ask us where it is in the tenets of journalism, but it is wrong. What is wrong is wrong. Look, um, you can't, in as much as we didn't agree with the GFE, they can come and tell us that, look, this is your behavior after the Mozambique game is the reason why we said we didn't want you guys 150 meters um, close to the team. So what is fair is fair. It doesn't, it, it doesn't depend on who is happening to or when it's happening. But to the Ivory Coast game, look, you talk about the atmosphere during the DRC and, and, and Cote d'Ivoire game. I was, I was really wishing that Gary was there to experience it. I think he went for um, the game that was very nice on paper with uh, Nigeria and, and uh, South Africa. <laughs> but in terms of the raw vibe and euphoria, look, the so Cote d'Ivoire and DRC game was unreal. I've, I've never witnessed anything like that. I was at the Mushuda Biola Stadium when Ghana faced Nigeria. If you remember the echo, the sound, the 60,000 capacity, the noise, it was lovely. But this was, this was different. And this was a whole party atmosphere. And that's something that, so I asked a number of journalists who had been there longer. And they attested to how the organization has been brilliant in terms of bringing the party fuel to the, to the stadium. So it's not just about the 90 minutes of football. It's about the entire experience. A couple of hours before, there's a DJ, there's music, there's dancing. And that's what we, we saw throughout. Look, Finn, in the final, we've, we've, we've actually agreed that we will have to be at the stadium about six, seven hours before kickoff because people are eager. The, and, and, the, and the general sentiment around Abidjan is they really believe that their, their name is written on the trophy. They talk about destiny. They talk about how just a couple of weeks ago they were on the verge of going out. In fact, had Ghana stayed, had, had we beaten Mozambique, Cote d'Ivoire would have been out of the Please, 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 Danny K, Danny K, relax. Had somebody no, not no, just, t- no no has somebody not touched the ball, some ball, Do you understand? Charlie, exactly. Has somebody <laughs> not touched the ball? And that was literally like three minutes to the end. So they really believed they were going out, but some way somehow the group stage finished and they had just clinched the a spot in the round of 16. Even after that, the guy tells me that look, they were going to face Senegal, and all they wanted was a good performance. And then the, the team just went on to win. Against Mali at halftime, they were down a goal. The Mali has went on to take the lead. And then some way, somehow, they found an equalizer and were able to win the game even before it went to penalty shootout. So they believe this is destiny. They believe that their name is written on the trophy. And I just spoke to another colleague journalist who, and I was not talking to him as a journalist. I was talking to him as a fan. And he said, look, even the fact that it had to take the Federation to sack um, uh, Gassé, who is a foreigner, 
and bring one of their own. He says it's, it feels like it is just divine that one of their own will take them to win this competition that is being hosted on their own soil. So when you look at some of these things, you 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 can't help but that hope that they are able to do it. But on the other hand, also, look, we have to credit the Nigerians. They've been brilliant from, from especially after the, after the second game. A very difficult team to break down. Um, you don't find a lot of chances against them. But then they also find a way to, with their, with their uh, uh, front two, with uh, Osimen and Lukman, a fantastic partnership who always find a way to get the goals for them. So for me, I think it's a, it's a perfect final. And even if you go back to the official song of the competition, it's the com- uh, a collaboration between an Ivorian and a Nigerian, Yemi Aladi and their magic system. So it's like every we knew before knowing. We knew before knowing that Nigeria and, and, and Cote d'Ivoire will go to the final. And for me they have been the two best teams of the competition. Of course, um and it's 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 only right that they, they find themselves in the final. Interesting.